construction of iron in the blast furnace. Iron is a very important material, it's used in construction and many other industries. It's extracted from the ground in the form of hematite. Hematite is the common name for iron 3 oxide, which is an ore of iron, an ore being a compound of a metal with usually oxygen and a rock dug out of the ground. Hematite is a lovely red rusty color, uh, but it's not very useful on its own. In order to make it useful, we have to extract the iron. How do we do that? Well, we use something called the blast furnace. Now the blast furnace is, as it sounds, a very hot container into which we put the raw materials necessary. What raw materials do we need? Well, if we think back to our reactivity series, iron is less reactive than carbon. So what we can do is we can perform a displacement reaction in order to reduce the iron, get rid of the oxygen, reduce the iron oxide, and leave us with liquid iron, which we can then cool down and use uh, for whatever we want. So, what raw materials do we need? Well, we've got our hematite, which is just dug out of the ground. We also need oxygen, which we get from the air. We use carbon, which is our reducing agent in this case. That's in the form of coke, which is elemental carbon from coal mines. Then we actually also add some calcium carbonate. Why do we do that? Because hematite is not pure iron oxide. It has some impurities in it. And the purpose of the limestone is to remove those impurities. Okay, so if we have a look at the blast furnace, it is a large tower uh, made of metal and we heat it from the bottom. It's very hot, over 300 degrees Celsius. At the top, we put all of our raw materials, except air. Air is pumped in at the bottom because it's hot and it's going to rise up through the rest of the material and cause these reactions to happen. At the end of our reaction, we've got some waste gases, nitrogen, and as we'll see in a minute, carbon dioxide. We also have our lovely liquid iron at the bottom, which we can just open a tap and take away, to cool it down. Then we've got solid slag. Slag is the name for the removed impurities. It's calcium silicate, and we'll talk about how to form that in just a moment. It is used for road building and some other industrial purposes. So what are the chemical reactions that need to take place? Well, firstly, we need to reduce the iron oxide to iron. How do we do that? Well, we need carbon monoxide. We don't add carbon monoxide, we get that through the incomplete combustion of carbon with oxygen, shown here. We end up with carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide at these high temperatures is then going to react with our iron oxide. In order to make iron, it's displacing it, it's reducing it, taking away the oxygen, and we end up with carbon dioxide, which is one of our waste gases. Not a very environmentally friendly process, this. So now we've got our iron, excellent. We still need to remove our impurities. The majority of the impurities in hematite are in the form of silicon dioxide, also known as sand uh, or silica. How do we get rid of that? Well, that's where the calcium carbonate comes in. As you probably know, under high temperatures, calcium carbonate undergoes thermal decomposition, where it breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. There's some more greenhouse gases, but that's the way it is. The calcium oxide is left over, and at these high temperatures, it reacts with the silicon dioxide to make this glassy, low-density substance called uh, calcium silicate, CaSiO3, also known as slag. This is a neutralization reaction because the calcium oxide is, uh, like all metal oxides, a base, whereas the silicon dioxide, like all non-metal oxides, is an acid. This is a neutralization reaction. The slag floats on top of the iron and can be skimmed off, leaving us with uh, liquid iron, which we can cool down and use. This is a very important process. It happens um, very often uh, because iron is such an important material.